Paul's Epistle to the Ephesians Introduction. Of all of Paul's epistles, there is none so packed full of divine revelation as is the book of Ephesians. Truths are introduced in its pages that are still unknown by many in the body of Christ today because they have been taught to spiritualize them away. When asked what the theme of the book of Ephesians is, many well-meaning individuals will reply, wives submit to your husbands or children obey your parents. Some will say it is about the church and while all three of these are subjects contained in the book of Ephesians, none of these are actually the theme of this great epistle. The theme actually permeates throughout the whole book of Ephesians and it is one of the best kept secrets in the world. Satan doesn't want the body of Christ to be enlightened as to its content which would make him look more foolish and we would be much more dangerous as adversaries to him. The theme of Ephesians is something that was a very foreign concept to the Jewish people under the Mosaic Covenant, as they looked forward to a day when the saints would be resurrected to rule and reign on the earth. Ephesians, however, tells of believers, Jews and Gentiles alike, in one body, in a dispensation, not law, but of grace, whose recipients have an heavenly destiny instead of an earthly one. Ephesians informs us in the body of Christ of all of our spiritual blessings that are stored up for us in heavenly places. Many of the truths that are found in this epistle cannot be found in any other portion of scripture authorship. The Apostle Paul is the author of Ephesians and Tychicus was Paul's penman as Paul's eyesight was weakened at this later time of his ministry. But God's grace was sufficient in Paul's infirmities date of writing. Ephesians is one of Paul's four prison epistles written after the book of Acts was completed when Paul spent two years in Rome under house arrest. It was written mostly to a Gentile audience, but it was intended for all who have trusted in Christ's finished work. Acts 28, Paul would later be released from his house arrest for a short time after writing this epistle. And then he would be imprisoned again back in Rome where he would eventually be put to death. The book was written around 62 AD. We find Paul visiting Ephesus briefly at the end of his second apostolic journey as he is returning to Jerusalem for a Jewish feast day. Acts 18 verses 18 to 21. Paul later returned to Ephesus for three years. Acts 19 verses 1 to 41. At the end of Paul's third apostolic journey, he stopped at Miletus, and from there he sent for the elders of the Ephesian church to meet with him. Acts 20 verses 13 to 38, chapter 1, in heavenly places. Ephesians 1 verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, Paul. Paul was formerly known as Saul of Tarsus. His Roman name appears as the first word in all 13 of his epistles, Romans through Philemon, which all appear one after the other in the Bible. They are followed by the Hebrew epistles of Hebrews through Revelation. Since Paul was the last person to have seen the risen Christ, it makes sense that we should consider why that was by looking at what God had to say to Paul that he didn't say to the twelve while he was with them. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 8 The twelve did this very thing at the Jerusalem council in Acts chapter 15 when they recognized God's calling on Paul to be the apostle of the Gentiles. Galatians 2 verses 1 to 9 1 Corinthians 15 verses 8 to 9, and last of all, he was seen of me also as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Paul was chosen by the will of God to be the apostle of the Gentiles. Romans 11 verse 13, For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. He was not God's choice to replace Judas as the twelfth apostle. The twelve were all apostles to the nation of Israel, and there were two qualifications that they had to meet that Paul could not. 
They had to have been with Jesus all the time since the baptism of John the Baptist, and they had to have been an eyewitness of his resurrection. Acts 1 verses 21 to 22, Wherefore of these men, which have accompanied with us all the time, that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John, unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. To the saints, Saints are people who have believed the gospel that Christ had died for their sins, was buried, and he rose again the third day. Nowhere in scripture are people made saints by a council vote or decree. Ephesians 1 verse 2, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be to you and peace. In this dispensation of grace, we are at peace with God because of what Jesus did for us by the cross. Grace and peace come to us from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, not from Paul. Ephesians 1 verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word blessed in the Greek is the same word we get the word eulogy from. We as believers are to speak well of the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. All spiritual blessings. Saints today receive spiritual blessings in heavenly places, whereas Israel was blessed with physical earthly blessings if they were obedient to their covenant. Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 to 14, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before these seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee in holy people unto himself as he hath sworn unto thee if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head, and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them, and thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. Why? The earth is Israel's home in eternity. Matthew 5 verse 5, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. It's not ours. Our home is in heavenly places. Ephesians 1 verse 3. In heavenly places, when believers die today, we go immediately to be with the Lord in heavenly places. Ephesians 1 verse 20, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead, and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Ephesians 2 verse 6, and hath raised us up together. 
and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 3 verse 10 to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. When a believing Israelite died in times past, they went into the heart of the earth, Abraham's bosom, aka paradise, to await the resurrection. The word places is in italics and is supplied by the translators to help us complete the thought and to differentiate between the other times the word heavenly is used. For example, heavenly things, heavenly country, heavenly Jerusalem, heavenly father, heavenly host, heavenly gift, heavenly calling, heavenly kingdom, and a heavenly vision in Christ Jesus, in the body of Christ. Ephesians 1 verse 4, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. We were not chosen for salvation and others chosen for damnation. We were chosen to be holy and without blame before him before the foundation of the world. In him, we are in him, Christ, by faith, and we are holy and without blame, because when he who knew no sin became sin for us, we were made the righteousness of God in him. Second Corinthians 5 verse 21, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. We are placed into the body of Christ in him, by the Holy Spirit, the moment we believe the gospel. Romans 6 verse 3, Know ye not that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. First Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Ephesians 1 verses 5 to 6, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children. Predestinated means the same thing as to ordain beforehand, foreordain. It does not say we are predestined unto salvation, but unto the adoption of children the adoption of children. God has predestined that all who believe by faith in his son's death, burial, and resurrection alone for our salvation would receive the adoption of children. Jesus Christ, God's son, is God's elect servant, Isaiah 42 verse 1. We who have believed by faith become members of the body of Christ. We are in Christ, accepted in the beloved. Those who are in the beloved are in Christ, and therefore we are accepted by God because of what Christ did for us. Jesus Christ is the beloved. God further foreordains us unto sonship. Sonship refers to maturity and equal rights in the family. The central passage on sonship is Galatians 4 verses 1 to 7. Our adoption is through Jesus Christ unto the Father, according to the good pleasure of his will. Ephesians 1 verse 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, in whom? In Christ. We who are in Christ are in him by placing our faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. We obtain redemption through Christ's blood. Redemption is defined as the forgiveness of sins. Our blood is tainted due to sin, but Christ's blood is not, because he was not born a sinner, nor did he ever sin. 
Isaiah 7 verse 14, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Hebrews 4 verse 15, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Hebrews 9 verse 22, and without shedding of blood is no remission. God purchased us, members of the church, which is his body, with his own blood. Acts 20 verse 28, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood, the mystery of his will. Ephesians 1 verses 8 to 9, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself. He hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the us in these verses are the members of the church, which is his body. Colossians 1 verse 24, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. The mystery of his will. This is about God willing that we, the church, which is his body, would one day dwell with him in heavenly places. This mystery had been hid to all previous generations under the law and before, so that we might fulfill his will for us in the heavenly places throughout all eternity. 1 Corinthians 2 verses 7 to 8. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Dispensation. Ephesians 1 verse 10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. The dispensation of the fullness of times. This refers to the time in the future when the body of Christ, those in heaven and Israel, those on earth, gather together in one to accomplish God's will for each throughout all. Eternity. This is the first of four times the word dispensation is mentioned in the Bible and all four by the Apostle Paul. This word is missing in most Bibles today. It is taken out by those opposed to dispensationalism. The other three occurrences are 1 Corinthians 9 verse 17, For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. Ephesians 3 verse 2, If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, word. Colossians 1 verse 25, Whereof I am made a minister, according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you, to fulfill the word of God. Ephesians 1 verses 11 to 12, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ. We have obtained an inheritance. Eternal life is not our inheritance, that is a gift of God's grace. But we, those who have believed in Christ, are predestined to be to the praise of his glory. The body of Christ is predestined to bring and to give God praise in the heavens while Israel is predestinated to bring and to give praise to God throughout all eternity on the earth. Remember that when you inherit something, it once belonged to someone else. Who could we inherit something from in heavenly places who would then in turn be disinherited? The positions in heavenly places that will one day be vacated very violently when Michael and his angels make war with the dragon and his angels. They will be cast down from those heavenly places at the midpoint of the tribulation period. Revelation 12 verses 7 to 10, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, 
and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Ephesians 1 verses 13 to 14, whom ye also trusted. After that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory, the word of truth. It is the gospel of your salvation, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 4. The word of truth is also mentioned in Psalm 119 verse 43, 2 Corinthians 6 verse 7, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15, James 1 verse 18. And it is not the gospel of our salvation in any of those verses. It relates to all of the word of God in these four verses. You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. The sealing with the Holy Spirit is the earnest down payment of our inheritance of what we shall have when our vile bodies put on immortality. Then our new bodies will be able to move about in the heavenly places for all eternity. All three members of the Godhead are involved in these opening 14 verses. The redemption of the purchased possession that is our bodies which will be redeemed on the day of our death, or at the rapture of the body of Christ, if we live that long. Ephesians 1 verses 15 to 17, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. The spirit of wisdom and revelation. We are to pray for believers that they will receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The more they study to shew themselves approved unto God a workman, the more wisdom and revelation they will have in the knowledge of him. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 17 to 2 verse 13. In the knowledge of him, the spirit of wisdom and revelation comes from humbling ourselves to God's word, wisdom concerning his plan, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 13, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Ephesians 1 verse 18 to 19, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us ward who believe according to the working of his mighty power. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Verse 18 is a continuation of verse 17. So without the spirit of wisdom, a person can never have their eyes of understanding enlightened. We must first see something or hear something before we can understand it. God is speaking about our understanding his word on a deeper level. What is the hope of his calling? God wants us to know the hope of his calling for us in his plan. Those who do not understand the hope of his calling will wander around thinking they are spiritual Israel, and they will be confused doctrinally and be divided. His calling for us is to be a part of Christ's body, which will live and function with him one day in heavenly places, according to the good pleasure of of his will. Ephesians 1 verses 8 to 9, the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. God will give to the saints the reward of the inheritance at the judgment seat of Christ. There is an inheritance, Ephesians 1 verse 11 and 14, and there is the reward of the inheritance. They are different. 1 Corinthians 3 verses 9 to 15. The reward of the inheritance is regarding what you knew of the mystery and what you did with that truth. Are you building on its foundation gold, silver, precious stones, 
or wood, hay, and stubble. Share right division with your friends and family with tracts and books and your words. Colossians 3 verses 23 to 25 And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done and there is no respect of persons, the exceeding greatness of his power. We who believe the gospel of grace and understand the mystery of God's will can understand all the spiritual blessings afforded to us because of the resurrection of Christ, the working of his mighty power. This also speaks about the power of the resurrection of Christ. Romans 1 verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every one that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Ephesians 1 verse 20, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, and set him at his own right hand, the highest position of honor with angels, authorities, and powers being made subject unto him. First Peter 3 verse 22, who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God. Angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. In the heavenly places, Ephesians is the only place in the scriptures where the phrase heavenly places is found. 1 verse 3 and 2 verse 6. Ephesians 1 verse 21. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, principality, power, might, and dominion. These are governmental positions in heaven and on earth. Colossians 1 verse 16, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And every name that is named, those who are under the positions mentioned above in verse, in that which is to come, the new world to come. Hebrews 2 verse 5, For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. Hebrews 6 verse 5, And have tasted the good word of God, and the powers of the world to come. The Ephesians 1 verses 22 to 23, And hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. The head, Jesus Christ, is the head of the body of Christ, which is his church, the church which is his body. This is not the church in the wilderness, Acts 7 verse 38 nor the church in Jerusalem, Acts 8, verse 1. They were both prophesied churches. Psalm 22, verse 22 is fulfilled in Matthew 26, verse 30. Matthew 16, verse 18 is fulfilled in Matthew 18, verse 17. See Acts 2, verse 47, this church was added unto. Acts 7, verse 38, this is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sina and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. The church which is Christ's body was a mystery kept hid from Satan and his princes from before the foundation of the world so that they would go through with the crucifixion. The crucifixion helped create the one new man, which is also known as the body of Christ, which is neither Jew nor Greek. The phrase, the one new man, is introduced in the next chapter. Ephesians 2 verse 15 the fullness of him that filleth all in all. The church is his body, and we fill up the body of Christ in heavenly places. Chapter 2, The One New Man, Ephesians 2, verse 1, And you hath he quickened, who are dead in trespasses and sins, and you, the first word, and, is a conjunction linking chapter 1 with chapter 2. The you mentioned is found back in the final verses of chapter 1. Paul is speaking to the church, the body of Christ. You and ye in the King James Bible are plural, while thee and thine are singular. Hath he quickened? 
made alive. The words are in italics because they are supplied by the translators to give a fuller understanding of what is being addressed. The translators didn't take liberties with the word of God because those words in italics are found in verse 5 below. And they help you understand what is being said by Paul. Dead in trespasses and sins, the people in the body of Christ were previously dead, spiritually speaking, and they were quickened, made alive when they believed the gospel. Colossians 2 verse 13, And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him having forgiven you all trespasses. Ephesians 2 verse 2, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. The pronoun ye denotes a group of at least two, and the word we further clarifies that the you spoken about in verse 1 is not one individual, but a group of people who make up the church in Ephesus. In time past, this is the period of time before the dispensation known as the but now time period. The period that is to follow is known as the ages to come. Verses 7 and 13. The course of this world. This is the direction which Satan has set for this world to walk in rebellion to God's course. The prince of the power of the air, the devil, that the devil is the spirit working in the lives of the lost people to follow the course he has set for the world through all means possible. The children of disobedience, the lost, a personal application can also be made to the individual and his life before coming to Christ. But it is only a small part of what is being taught here. Ephesians 2 verses 3 to 5 among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved in times past. Verses 2 and 13. Children of wrath, those going to hell for their unbelief. Even when we were dead in sins, God didn't wait until we cleaned up our lives, but instead he made us alive, quickened by the gospel. For by grace ye are saved through faith, Ephesians 2 verses 6 to 7, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. The ages to come, after the rapture, the dispensation of grace will be over, and the world will be in the next age that is to come. The tribulation period will last seven years, followed by the kingdom age that will last a thousand years. Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 9, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves... It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. By grace are ye saved through faith. By grace, God's through faith, God's also. It is the faith of Jesus Christ that saves us, not our own faith. We simply put our weak faith, belief, or trust in the perfect faith of Christ, and he saves us through his faith, the faith of Jesus Christ, and that not of yourselves, that what? That faith, your faith is not what is being talked about here. It is the faith of Christ. Galatians 2 verse 16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. It is the gift of God. The faith of Jesus Christ is a gift to all who simply believe in his death, burial, and resurrection. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Salvation is apart from any work or works. It is the work of Christ on the cross that has redeemed us. We have nothing to boast about. The Ephesians 2 verse 10, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. We are his workmanship, 
God created the one new man to be his workmanship. The body of Christ is what God is building today. Paul is our pattern today, and he is our wise master builder. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 10, dispensing to us the pattern that we are to use to build the body of Christ his way. 1 Timothy 1 verses 15 and 16, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. God has chosen all who believe the gospel to be placed in Christ by the Holy Spirit, and all that are in him are to do good works. Before ordained, God's word says that all believers were ordained before to walk in good works. What are good works? They are doing what God is doing in this present dispensation. Ephesians 2 verse 11, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Gentiles in the flesh, those who were not circumcised. Uncircumcision, Gentiles, the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, Jews. Ephesians 2 verse 12 to 13, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus ye, who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, foreigners to the nation of Israel, non-citizens, the covenants of promise, the covenants that God made with Israel, but now the dispensation of grace. Ephesians 3 verse 2, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, Lord. Those who are in Christ have a new status than what they had before their salvation when they were far off without Christ. We are made nigh, near, by the blood of Christ, when we are saved by grace through faith in the gospel of the grace of God. Acts 20 verse 24, But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry, which I have received of the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Mm-hmm. Ephesians 2 verse 14, For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. He is our peace, Jesus Christ, who had made both one. Gentiles had no hope on their own outside of the nation of Israel prior to the cross. They had to submit to the fact that salvation was of the Jew and then be circumcised as a proselyte, plus keep the law of Moses. John 4 verse 22, Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But not any more. Gentiles and Jews both come to God the same way today by faith alone, apart from the works of the law. Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 9, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The middle wall of partition. This is not a literal physical wall made with hands, but a wall set up in God's word, separating circumcised from the uncircumcised. It began with Abraham. Genesis 17 verses 10 to 27. Ephesians 2 verse 15, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, the enmity. There was division, partition between those in a covenant relationship with God, Israel, and those who were not the Gentiles, the law of commandments, the law of Moses, twain, an old English way of saying two. One new man. The one new man was made in Christ by bringing both Jew and Gentile together into one new man, the body of Christ. So, making peace, 
Christ allowed there to be peace between the circumcision and the uncircumcision and between God and the uncircumcision because they were no longer separated by the law of commandments, but united in Christ, Ephesians 2 verse 16, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, reconcile both unto God to bring both into a right relationship with God. One body, the body of Christ, is made up of all who are saved, whether they be Jews or Gentiles. They all have a heavenly destiny, whereas Israel, when they were under the law, had an earthly destiny. Ephesians 2 verse 17, And came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh, preach peace to you, peace with God through the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1 to 4, them which were far off Gentiles, them that were nigh, Israel. Deuteronomy 6 verse 7, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou leest down, and when thou risest up. Ephesians 2 verses 18 to 19, For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints, and of the household of God. Fellow citizens, through Christ today both Jews and Gentiles have access unto the Father by the Holy Spirit, which we receive the moment we believe the gospel. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 13 and 15 verses 1 to 4. The household of God, saints from every age are in the household of God. The body of Christ and Israel are both in the kingdom of God, but we have different destinies. We will bring glory to God in the heavenly places while Israel does the same on the earth in the kingdom. Ephesians 2 verse 20 and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, the foundation that which the house is built upon. The apostles and prophets, Paul and Barnabas, were apostles for the body of Christ, and the body of Christ also had prophets during its infancy before the word of God was completed. Acts 14 verse 4 and 14, But the multitude of the city was divided, and part held with the Jews, and part with the apostles which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out, Ephesians 3 verse 5, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Ephesians 4 verse 11, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors, and teachers, the chief cornerstone. The chief cornerstone is the stone on which all the foundation is based. First Corinthians 3 verse 11, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Ephesians verses 21 to 22, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit, and habitation of God. The body of Christ is made up of Jews and Gentiles, which are the one new man in verse 10. They make up the building that was fitly framed together through the work of the Spirit. Chapter 3 the manifold wisdom of God. Ephesians 3 verses 1 to 2, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word, the prisoner of Jesus Christ. Paul was Jesus Christ's prisoner in Rome for us Gentiles. It was here that he wrote the four prison epistles. Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon, Paul preached to all who would come in unto him, and many in Caesar's own household became believers. Acts 28 verses 30 to 31, And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house, and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God, and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ, with all confidence, no man forbidding him. Philippians 4 verse 22, All the saints salute you, 
chiefly they that are of Caesar's household, the dispensation of the grace of God, the current dispensation was given unto us in the body of Christ by Christ. Through Paul to reveal to the world, it did not come from the twelve apostles to Israel. The word dispensation has been removed from many newer versions of the Bible because they are opposed to the dispensational method of Bible study. This is a grave error. Ephesians 3 verses 3 to 4, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote a four in few words whereby, when you read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, the mystery. Paul received a revelation from God concerning the mystery, called the mystery of Christ, in verse 4. The mystery is a program or a series of mysteries given by revelation to the apostle of the Gentiles to give to the body of Christ today. Romans 11 verse 13, For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Ephesians 3 verse 5, Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This mystery was kept secret since the world began, but it was made manifest to Paul for us, and later what Paul was teaching was revealed to the apostles and prophets by the Holy Spirit, his holy apostles and prophets. Paul spake plainly to the twelve apostles in Acts 15 at the Jerusalem Council, Galatians 2, so this was not a reference to them. The Holy Spirit revealed to the apostles and prophets of the body of Christ in its infancy that what Paul was revealing was true. Once the word of God was complete, these offices ceased. Ephesians 4 verse 11 to 12, And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Ephesians 3 verse 6, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. We have not replaced Israel today. Paul is talking about a new body that both believing Jews and Gentiles are one in, which is called the one new man. The Gentiles should be fellow heirs. We are both heirs of the promise of the Spirit not heirs of Israel's promises, of the same body. Believing Gentiles are of the same body as believing Jews, the body of Christ, partakers of his promise in Christ, a promise singular, not promises plural which belong to Israel. All can be saved today apart from the law of Moses by believing the gospel. Ephesians 3 verses 7 to 8, whereof I was made a minister, according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, the gift of the grace of God. Paul could not be forgiven under the law for his previous blasphemy against God, but he was given the gift of grace when God began a new dispensation with him. The dispensation of the grace of God. Verse 2 above. 1 Timothy 1 verses 11 to 16, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting, less than the least of all saints. Paul called himself this because he persecuted the church of God, the Jewish kingdom church, Acts 8 verse 1, and Saul was consenting unto his death. 
And at that time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. 1 Timothy 1 verses 11 to 16, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor, and injurious. But I obtained mercy, because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. The unsearchable riches of Christ, the mysteries that have been kept hidden from the foundation of the world. Ephesians 3 verse 9, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. To make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, Paul's ministry was twofold. Firstly, he was to share the gospel of grace, which was committed to his trust. Lastly, he was to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery concerning Jews and Gentiles, in the one new man, the body of Christ, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God. The mystery was hid from Satan and the other princes of this world, so they would go through with the crucifixion. 1 Corinthians 2 verses 6 to 8, Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world, that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Ephesians 3 verse 10, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Part of our purpose as a church today is to make known the mystery that was hid in God from before the foundation of the world. That mystery was that God was forming the one new man after Israel's fall, whereby believing Jews and Gentiles could be a part of one body by faith, which is the body of Christ. The manifold wisdom of God, 1 Corinthians 2 verses 6 to 8, speak about the manifold wisdom of God that was hid in God from the beginning of the world. Ephesians 3 verse 11, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. The eternal purpose, God's plan to reclaim the heavens from Satan and his minions for all eternity. Ephesians 3 verse 12, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him, by the faith of him, by the faith of Jesus Christ. Galatians 2 verse 16, not by faith in him. That is not what it says. Ephesians 3 verses 13 to 15. Wherefore I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, the whole family in heaven and earth. This is synonymous with the household of God mentioned earlier in Ephesians verse 19. Ephesians 3 verse 16, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. The inner man, the one new man after trusting in Christ. Ephesians 3 verses 17 to 19, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Many today are not grounded in the mysteries revealed to Paul, because Satan has been successful in keeping this mystery a secret. This is the same secret that was kept from him for 4,000 years, is sadly still a secret, 
to many members of the body of Christ today. Ephesians 3 verses 20 to 21, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen.